Welcome to the My Tech Tool Belt Podcast. We're your hosts. I'm Shannon. And I'm Brenda. And this is a podcast where we highlight educators who innovate, engage, and inspire through the use of technology. So today on the My Tech Tool Belt Podcast, we're getting ready to go to the ISTE conference in Chicago. Will you be joining us? Are you ready? Today, we will help you get all the tools you need to get ready for the big conference. Join us. We are headed to ISTE, Chicago. That's right. So near the end of June, and we're very excited. I have never been. Uh, Shannon, you've been. I've been to a, a few, maybe three or four before. Okay, Over excellent. the course of my 15 years. But I'm a newbie. Yes. And I... I'm already feeling a bit overwhelmed. It can be overwhelming. It is an international conference. So that's the difference between some of the other conferences that I've drug you along to. They're a little more local. This is going to be your first international conference. So right. anticipated, I think the last one I went to, 15,000 people. Oh my. So it's, it's big. Right. It's a big one. So I looked over the schedule like about a week ago. Did you have a panic attack? I did. Because I did. <laughs> I had to immediately close it. <laughs> And get my bearings. But we're going to talk about how we overcome our fears <laughs> and we navigated the schedule because it did, it took us, it took us some time to get through it. Right, right. And it's just, once you start getting further into it, then it, it gets a little bit more understandable and, and that's why we're here today. Well, I think it's, I think it's important that people who are attending for the first time, like you, don't think that they're just going to get on the plane and they're going to, you know, walk in and then they're going to get their goodie bag or whatever it is. And then they're going to be fine. Like there is preparation that needs to go into this event. And hopefully we'll give you some tips. We have some other people that have shared tips as well. Right. And that you'll have someone with you. You and I are going together this year, which I think will make me navigating public transportation in downtown <laughs> Chicago a little easier and then less scary. But I think, you know, the main thing is, is that you, you can't go unprepared. Right. There are so many things that you need to remember to pack and just and navigate through the app and all those things. So hopefully this podcast will give you just how to be prepared for ISTE. Right. And uh, we've done a little bit of homework. A lot of homework. <laughs> We go, we've gone down a few rabbit holes, That's I would right. say. Definitely. But we're here to share with you everything we've learned so, so far. far. Yeah. Right. So number one, for new attendees, it's a big conference, right? It and is. there's buses to navigate and hotels and maybe a time difference. Just there's a lot to take in. Well, and just know that this event, unlike some of the local events, a lot of the local stuff that we go to is at a hotel, which means we can stay at the hotel and we just go downstairs and go to the event. But in this case, this is at the convention center, the McCormick Convention Center right. in Chicago. So no matter where you are, you're staying outside. You're not staying in the convention center. You're right. at a hotel. So ISTE has buses um, that they're running. But like us, we're not at one of the ones that are on a direct bus line. So you and I spent a good too long <laughs> today just figuring out, okay, how many blocks, how many, how right. far do we need to get to get to the metro or to where a bus will pick us up that ISTE's running. So that if we would have waited until Sunday night right. or the night we got there um, to do that, that could have been very stressful mm -hmm. and caused even, you know, more anxiety than, you know, we may already have. So like we're getting there on Sunday yeah. evening, early evening. And so hopefully we can sort of check out the lay of the land yeah. that night and figure out where everything is, at least as far as the trains or the the bus stops. Uh, so that we can figure that out, so we aren't panicking Monday morning when we're the trying to be there. The most important thing: where is the Starbucks? Where is the Starbucks? <laughs> I we haven't looked that one up yet. No, but uh, we've got it, an. App. We will. There's yes, yeah, that. that's that's the one's easy. <laughs> so when you get there, no matter what day it is, whether you get there Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday night, make sure you've given yourself enough time to figure out. And if and if the first day you just want to Uber, you do you. Right. You know, that's totally fine. But ISTE does provide transportation on their website. There is that information. You can download the maps. So I think that's really one of the main things that can help mm -hmm. ease that stress. Another one that I think is, is really important too for a new 
a new person attending is have a focus, have a goal of what you're interested in learning that year. Most of us, if you're in a school or wherever you work, well, I would imagine most of these people work in, <laughs> this is an education <laughs> conference, so I imagine most of you work in education, but our schools or our universities or wherever, we have a focus for the year. And so ours, my team is blended learning, personalized instruction, and I am bringing one of my teammates with me. And so I'm particularly focused on higher education and how technology is impacting higher education. And so that will be my lens. And then his lens will focus more on our K-12 sector, blended personalized instruction and the technology that will impact those programs that we have in place at the university. So he and I will sit down as will, you'll probably be in that conversation too. Right. And we'll go, hey, these are all of our sessions that we're interested in going to so that we don't overlap, so that right. we can cover the most ground. And then what I also figured is I think you want to try to be as focused as possible because if you just go in saying, I want to see what new technology is out there, that's like no. so broad, yeah. right? You can't, you can't go in like that. Pick one, maybe two things. If you're interested in augmented reality and virtual reality, then you're, you're going to have a field day because there is a lot there's a lot of opportunity in that space. But know that that's like your focus. Or if you want to focus on project-based learning or Google suites or video or storytelling, like otherwise you're going to, there's going to be too many sessions to choose from and you're going to, you're going to have that, okay, I need to look away for a minute on the schedule. <laughs> the deer headlight. Exactly. Exactly. So you're, you're absolutely right. Stay focused, stay with your goal. Think about what that is. Think about maybe what you want to, how you want to personally grow as a teacher or what your district is focusing on or that kind of stuff. And that will at least get you maybe like one or two sessions a day. And then, right. then you can have like a free one to or exciting explore. one. Yeah. One of the, one tip, um, and someone else told me this at one of the other conferences I went to was he always picks a session that he knows nothing about, totally off the mark. I've either, I've either never heard of that or I can't really see how that's related to the work I'm doing or just something kind of just totally in left field for what you do personally or professionally and go to that session. And for good or bad, sometimes he said the takeaways were spectacular and you just learned something new. Other times it really is like, yep, I was right. I didn't really need to do that. So <laughs> but I, maybe sometimes you'll know somebody who, 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 could could, who, would, be ben, who would benefit from right. that. Absolutely. So I, I thought that's a new way to kind of push yourself outside your boundaries. For me, that fell into the augmented and virtual reality components a few years ago when I, when I was like, I don't really know about this AR, VR thing. And then by this year, I'm like, you know, I was asked by Tosa's Talking Tech and their podcast when we were talking was like, what's the next thing that's going to really impact technology in the classroom? And it's to me, it's going to be augmented and virtual reality. It's, we're already seeing it impact students in the classroom. Right. So, you know, two or three years ago, I was like, eh. and then I went to that session because somebody told me, go to one you don't really think. And I was like, this is stupid. And then I was like, well, this is amazing. <laughs> like, this is, this is life changing. And I'm very, very interested in merge cubes and things like that. Right. So anywho, that would be something that I would really go outside your box, go outside your box, yeah. step outside, do one thing, the whole right. conference, just pick one and ma make that be your right. one for good or bad. Absolutely. If you don't, if you really hate it, you just leave. Right. Like, nobody's going to be mad. Yeah. Honestly, exactly. they won't even know you left. Um, okay. So the SC website. Oh, yes. We logged in. We logged in. And immediately saying, wow, yeah. that's a lot of stuff. So the first thing you should do is don't look at the, <laughs> don't look at the program. Um, the first thing you should do is go to your profile right. and make sure all the information is up to date. S start there. Right. Then once you feel like your photo's up to date and, and your information, all, all your email addresses and Twitter handles and everything is up to date, then you can go to the program section and it's called program. plan your experience view the program. And then when you click on that, that's when it comes down to 1,144 sessions Amazing. will all just be listed there. So here's what we learned. Number one, you won't have time to do all <laughs> 1,000. <laughs> you are not. <laughs> And a good third of them have been ruled out by pre-registration. So if you didn't pre-register for those, don't ah. even bother looking at those anyways. So, right. so this is what we did. You and I are going to our first sessions on Monday. So on the left-hand side, we clicked on sort by date, Monday. Show me only... Monday morning. We did that. Well, then we, then we <laughs> sorted down by Monday morning, and then we, we favorited the ones that looked interesting to us for Monday morning, and then we, we went to Monday afternoon and favorited those, and Monday evening and favorited those, and then we went into Tuesday. And I think that's as far as we got, again, and so we still have Wednesday to do. But we we went in and favorited those so that we kind of knew 
these were the ones that were interesting to us. Right. And you're not committed. No. You're, you're just, just saying, that looks interesting. Yeah. That looks interesting. And and it gives you the opportunity on the website to look further into not just the title, but the description, who's presenting, what time, where it's located, and a, a background of what you'll be doing or what you'll be listening to. Exactly. And if you're interested in that presenter... You can click on them and it'll tell you what other sessions they might be doing if they're doing multiple sessions. Right. Very so, handy. Very handy. Uh, you can also search by presenter and exhibitor as well on this page. But our recommendation is just go and just click on the favorites of things you think you might be interested in going. And right. here's why. Because if you're interested in it, maybe 10 or so thousand other people might also be interested in it. And the chances of you getting into every single session, like let's say you only picked one in a time slot and that one was full by the time you got there. You have no backup plan. This way you can go back to the app, which we'll talk about in a minute, and we can and you can see what other sessions are going on at the same time and what other ones you thought might you were interested in and you can pivot because you need a plan B. You need a backup plan. Right. And also there's some sessions that maybe it says 10 to 1 p.m., 10 a.m. to 1 p.m., but they don't necessarily go 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. They may be some sort of like a poster session or a playground where you can just go in and go out. Mm -hmm. You can spend 15 minutes. You can spend two hours. It's really up to you and what the session is about. So you may, even though you've already picked something for that time slot, you may want to pick several things for that Absolutely. same time slot. So, Absolutely. So now after we pick all of our favorites, mm -hmm. what's our next thing to do, Shannon? Uh, the re my recommendation would be to download the app. So on your mobile device, your phone or your iPad. Which is new. It's br I mean, it's br like, like <laughs> it just sh today. showed up it showed today. Up today <laughs> uh, June 1st. So we downloaded the app today. Right. And it was very easy to download. We logged in. Nice looking app. Very clean looking. It's probably one of the, one of the cleanest looking apps I've seen in a long time. You need your email address, your username that you log in to your, uh, to your online account, your to .com your account. your account. However, it is not the password. It's an access code, which you need to get your personal access code from your ISTE account online at the www.iste.org space. So in, in your profile, it'll have your mobile access code. And you need to put that in as your password, quote unquote, and then to it'll the app. to the app and it'll open up the app. We will be doing mini Instagram sessions um, and we'll also be putting them on YouTube on how to navigate the app, but go to your profile and make sure that it's the right picture. It will not bring over your email address, which was great for me right. because my ISTE website login is my personal email address and I don't necessarily want everybody I come in contact with to be emailing me on my personal email. So, so it was really great for me because I did not want everybody emailing me on my personal email. So I used my tech tool belt email by Shannon at mytechtoolbelt.com my email address. And I put my tech tool belt as my website and I put my Twitter handle, which is not my tech tool belt, but it's <laughs> Tobaldo on tech. <laughs> uh, Brenda will be at my tech tool belt Correct. Twitter. And so I was able to put in the information that I wanted to share when I come in contact with someone using the app, I can, we can exchange information. information. So that was important. So you'll need to make sure that you don't just put your Twitter handle in, you need to put twitter.com slash your Twitter mm -hmm. handle. Right. So for me, it would be Tobaldo on tech for you. It'd be twitter.com forward slash my tech tool belt. I don't know why, but that's just the way just that the, address the way the want. app is, is going. But very important that you do this. Yes, yes. Because you can contact people while you're at the event yeah. and exchange information. You can find people that way. You can message people through the app. It's going to be an amazing... You can also block creepers <laughs> in the app. So I've already blocked Brenda. <laughs> <laughs> I unblocked her, though, because I like her. But you can block people. So if, you're, if it's too much... But you can also have the option of even turning it on as far as... Yes, you can actually hide yourself from right. the attendee list as well. Right. So that's in your profile. So it's really important that you download the app. We'll give you more specific information with video on the app, on our Instagram, and, and make sure that your, your information is up to date so you can find people. There's right. also really cool things that supposedly the app is going to do once we're there, right. like navigate you to your session. I know. That's going to be so amazing. It, it, like when Brenda and I lose each other in the convention <laughs> center, we can like send each other the locations and hopefully find each other hopefully. on the vendor floor because that's going to be the craziest place. The other thing in the app that we'll show you is the favorites that you favorited on the website 
will also show up in your agenda. And then once you are with your team or your other people or you're all alone and you're just kind of, you're deciding the night before, where do you really want to go? Then you can actually apply it to your agenda. And then your your calendar, quote unquote, in the app will actually show you where you're going and at what times. And so you can see if there's overlaps or gaps and things like that. The, you can't add to your agenda on the website, but you can do it once you've favorited everything. That's why it's really important to go through and favorite things. Then you can put it in the app. From the app, then you can move right. everything into your agenda. And the other thing I saw on the app is that you you will be able to hopefully scan QR codes. It looks like that. Through like your phone. So I think that'll be really nice. So you can just go to a vendor or someone that you've met, met. and you can scan their QR code and get all the information you need to get in contact with them. Yeah. And you'll, so you'll have a little like my contacts section in the app of people you meet. Cause you're going to, you and I have business cards because right. we are crazy. <laughs> um, but because we're marketing the, you know, the podcast, the podcast. And, and I work at a university and blah, 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 blah. So we have business cards, but your average teacher, why right. Mrs. Hoffman and I teach fourth <laughs> grade. That's my sister, by the way, <laughs> shout out. Yeah. It doesn't need a business. Card. You don't need a business card. So, so yeah. So, so this is a great way for us to connect with you or you to connect with us using the contact information. That's why it's so critical that your contact information is up to date in the web, right on the website and, and in the app. Because we don't know at this point where that information is going to be pulling from. My guess right. is it's pulling from the website because the QR codes are most likely going to be generated from the website. And the app looks like it's a standalone. Yes. So, but we'll see. We'll, more to come. More to come, right? More to and come. And maybe we'll tweet the answer when we know the answer. We will tweet the answer. <laughs> Brenda's in charge of that tweeting. <laughs> the other thing is the digital tote section that's on the website and in the, in the, app. In the app. And the cool thing about that is... You're not going to be able, if we're not going to say this enough, you're not going to be able to go to every session. But there might be a session that you just want to see the presenter's notes and you want to, you can always reach out to them. Yes, obviously tweet them and or email them or whatever. But you can grab any artifacts that they've uploaded digitally. And there are quite a few already up there right. into your digital tote so that you've got them. Or if it's a session you are going to, you can download it automatically and just have it so that you're offline um, mm -hmm. And you're not, you know, worried about downloading it in the moment. Right. So I have, I have already started to put anything that I favorited. I've, ar if they had archives in there already up there, or information already up there, I've already downloaded it to my digital tote. So I've, so that way I don't forget and I don't have to go back and do it later or on the hotel Wi-Fi or whatever. So next sessions, all the many different types of sessions. There are sessions. There are sessions and sessions. So this is what was overwhelming to us was there are four different categories of sessions. There's the listen and learn. There's a participate and share an explore and create and an engage and connect. So first listen and learn. What are those? Those are the ones you would typically think of when you're going to a conference. Yep. They're the keynote speakers, the snapshots, the panel discussions, and the lectures. Yeah. Anything that you're going to be sitting and getting. Right. So with the keynote speakers, uh, typically what I recommend is you don't need to take notes in a keynote. But and they are very motivating. Oh my gosh, you got to go to the you, keynotes. You need to go. <laughs> and I'm just going to right now shout out to the one that I've been, you already know who I've been. <laughs> I cannot wait for Rabbi Michael Cohen. Right. I can't. I, I have been following him on Twitter for so long. I'm a huge fan. He probably has no idea who I am. I'm giving him a huge shout out on our podcast right now. He works locally here in the Los Angeles area. And uh, I'm just I'm just a big fan of the work that he does and the thinking. I'm jealous of all the thinking that he gets to do because he he really does get to think a lot and on education technology and just really is impactful, obviously. And you're I'm so excited to hear him speak. The last time he was speaking locally... I was at, like out of town and I think you were out of town. And so right. I, I was like, Brenda, you got to go to this and you couldn't go either. But so super shout out. Definitely go to the keynotes. Um, if you, if you can't get just, to all of them. Right. Get to one. Get to one least. of them. Yeah. Those are huge. The ones where you're going to want to be taking notes and really engaging are going to be the lectures and any other interactive session that you're going to. You're going to want to be able to engage. So you're going to need to have a way to take notes, whether you're going to do that on your iPad 
whether you've got an Apple Pencil, whether you've got a tablet, a Chromebook. Piece of paper. Piece of paper. Don't forget the pens and pencils. Pens and pencils. (laughs) Yeah, if you're going to go analog, bring your pens and pencils. Use something like Google Docs or OneNote. Evernote's always good. And especially collaborative. So if you're bringing this back to your district or your peers, your your coworkers, Dan and I will share a OneNote notebook and we'll have us, we actually already have a notebook called Conferences. And in the conference, there's a tab that will has all the conferences we go to and then we have an actual page naming structure where it'll have his initials dd and then the session he went to and then all of his notes and photographs go in there any digital resources archives notes that he takes even if he we have another guy who's very analog and he like handwrites everything then he takes pictures right of that and uploads it and then he actually goes through and start and types his notes next to it so we have a picture of what he had and then also his notes i'm just a straight up typer. So I type and take pictures, type and take pictures. Um, And pictures, I think, are so important. They are. That along with, if there's a Google side presentation, you're just going to put that link in there. You're going to link to anything that they talk about, their Twitter handle, their like any... And you already have their digital tote. Yeah, you've got you've got so. any PDFs or resources in there. You could just copy those links over to your shared notebook, mm-hmm. and then and then the whole team um, has them. So, but it's so nice, especially I think if you have your your phone, you take take a picture of the whole room, yeah. take a picture of the presenter, and sometimes that'll just jog your memory about just the whole session in general. Absolutely, and then always, always, always snap a picture of their email address, Twitter handle, right. whatever that either that intro slide or that exit slide, because just just in case you didn't grab it or type it right or whatever, you don't want to be bummed out. So those are those are definitely some of the resources that I use. I have used everything I just said, Evernote, OneNote, a Google Drive, pen and paper. I've used it all. I've used my iPad and I've used my MacBook. My preference is that I take an iPad with me and I'm going to tell you why. So I bring my laptop usually and I but I don't bring it to the conference and the session with me. I usually leave it in the hotel. So if anybody's going to rob me, it'll be in the safe, but I don't, I don't usually lug it around because it's because it's a MacBook pro. It's, it's it's a little heavy, but my iPad is a lot smaller. I've got a keyboard set up for it. I've got the Apple pencil. I can take everything, everything I need to do. I can do right on that iPad. And here's the thing. You're going to need power, right? Because you're going to be going all day with your phone right? and a device. And you may be gone from seven in the morning Till seven at night. Ten at night. Ten at night. (laughs) I have other plans. There's there's activities you're going to. So you're going to need power. And not every session room is going to have enough outlets for every single person to charge up. So you're going to bring a portable charger, which we're going to get to in a few minutes. And you're going to need to find power. So uh, that's why I bring an iPad, because I can can easily activate it with a portable charger. Right. That's That's my two cents. And the tablet's battery lasts a lot a long, lot longer. longer and you can adjust the screen and right. da, da, da. Um, and you can just turn it offline because you don't need it on all the time so it's just really it's just it's just easier I think if you have access to that that would be my recommendation so those are the listen and learns the participate and shares those are those poster sessions that you definitely should not miss poster sessions poster session is like a smaller it's like a one person could be one person, could be a small group. Small group. Talking, you, they're usually presenting um, something that they've done or something they just want to share. Imagine a science fair, mm-hmm. like on steroids. Okay. So sometimes there's actually students that are at the poster session that'll talk with you. This year, the, the poster sessions are supposed to be phenomenal. So I would say if, if you have an opportunity, find you know three or four different poster sessions that are in a time slot that you want to go to. Take take the time and walk through the poster sessions and spend some time there. They're often just not enough to do a full workshop, but definitely worth stopping by. And and it's more interactive, right? Really, yeah, you're the person standing right there. Right. And and they're usually presenting research or any kind of, a, some kind of an activity that they did, something they've made or built or created or tried and usually worth every minute that you have. I would say it's, it's very powerful. Okay. So that definitely do that. So we have Mm -hmm. in participate and share poster sessions, interactive lectures, yes, and forums. So forums were according to the ISTE website, you had to pre-register for the forums. So if you had if you pre-registered and paid for a forum or pre-registered for a forum earlier on when you registered to go to the conference, then that's where you are. And make sure you don't miss those because you've paid for because you've paid for those (laughs) or you signed up for those and somebody else is going to 
be sad that they couldn't get in. So right. the interactive lectures are not just sit and get, but you're going to be participating. So in other words, there's most likely an app or a website or something that you need to know what's going to be going on that you're going to be engaging with. So let's say they're going to talk about Go Noodle, but if this wasn't, this would be an interactive session where we are going to get up and all Go Noodle. So you will be participating. It's a we do kind of a situation. So those will be be prepared to be engaging, maybe not verbally or physically, but there's going to be some digitally. You'll be digitally getting engaged. at your computer. And and please don't come to this tech conference with no tech. Right. Please don't, because you will not get as much out of it. So I can't imagine that anybody would, but I felt like it was just important right. to say that. You because, never know. Yeah. And you don't really want to do everything from your mobile phone. If you have a Chromebook or a laptop, whatever your device is, a, t- a tablet, you need to make sure you have that with you. Right. It's going to be... Well, because I know that last uh, conference that we went to, one of the sessions was, okay, everybody needs to download this right. application, right? So whether you're on a tablet or a computer, there was ways to do it. And they were going to walk you through the whole thing of setting it up. And so I think that those are great sessions. They are. But there's always the guy over, or, or gal like, over oh. in the corner that's like, oh, I didn't bring my device. And you're like, you're at a tech conference. <laughs> so don't be that guy. No, don't, don't be that don't guy. Don't be that guy. Um, and then there's Explore and Create. That's the next section. So that's the third one. Those are hosted activities and playgrounds. So hosted activities, our friends at Classcraft will be hosting uh, an event. Kahoot is hosting an event. Flipgrid is hosting an event. There are, I'm sure there's others that, but there are a lot of hosted activities. Check out uh, playgrounds too. Playgrounds are where you can do things like makerspace. And a lot of it is just meeting, meeting people that are interested in what you are. AR, VR. Okay. And maybe programming. Programming, coding, coding. Legos, what it is. It's where you will have your time to get your hands and touch something. Right. So definitely check those out. And then um, the engage and connect is definitely, um, if you're a part of an affiliate group with ISTE, uh, me, I'm part of the higher ed affiliate group. So I will go to a higher ed meeting and then after hours activities. Yes. So Kahoot and Flipgrid and Classcraft, Classcraft they're doing after hours ones uh, as well. So those are ones that you would do after the event is over, more social activities oftentimes. And don't quote me, but oftentimes there's like karaoke, right. um, food and drinks, food and drinks, come and meet and greet. We will have not, it won't be listed on the SC website, but if you find Brenda, yes. We're going to have find Brenda and, <laughs> and show us that you've downloaded and left us a review. Take a screenshot of the review you left us of our podcast. And we will have special swag for you. Swag for you. Yes. If you follow me on Twitter, you'll see kind of some of the things that I've been ordering our swag. We've got lots of swag coming up. But yep. So we do have, we will be having. We'll be wearing our purple shirts. Purple shirts. And uh, we've got extra, pur- we've, we have our, we have multiple purple shirts because <laughs> last conference we went to, we only had one each and <laughs> nobody liked this. By the end of the day, we were a little ripe. Um, so anyway, so those are the four different sessions, types, session types. Again, there are 1100 plus sessions that you can go to. But I would encourage everyone to try, try more than one. Do definitely. Well, first of all, you got to get out. You got to do time. a social activity. Right. So, and if you're scared to go along, contact us. We'll, we'll go with you. We'll tell you where we're going to be. <laughs> That's right. Um, and you can tag along with us. We're happy to do that. Yeah. But I also think like you definitely need to see what a playground looks like. Right. Uh, find one that you might be interested in. Or like you said, what is your friend interested in? Mm-hmm. And, uh, and definitely walk through the poster sessions. Right. And hit a keynote. Yep. And meet people. Yes. And find out where they're going, what they're doing. You cannot go to conferences like this and not talk to anyone. Right. If you do that, you will not have the experience that that you are destined and meant to have. Right. I will talk to everyone. (laughs) Everyone. If you talk to me, I'll talk. I mean, even if you don't talk to, even if I don't talk to people, I talk to people (laughs) all the time, all the time. I I think that that's super super important. That that the most a lot of times people go to the conference for the sessions. I tell my my people, my team, go to the conference for the networking. Right. Absolutely. You go to meet other people. The sessions are great. That's like a bonus. Right. I go because at the end of the day, I my dream is to meet Rabbi Michael Cohen. <laughs> You're gonna do it. I, I ha- I'm yeah. gonna do it. Yes. I. We just need to find him. He's. I'm. A, he's, I'm gonna tweet the heck out of this episode, <laughs> Rabbi Michael Cohen. Please, <laughs> please let me meet you. So I'm super. I'm, I'm super excited about who I'm gonna meet this time. And and I actually had somebody recognize me. 
uh, wow. at the last conference that we were at a, a couple of weekends ago. And they, I, so when I went to check in, before I even said my name, they were like, oh, Tomoldo on tech. So, you know, nice. yay. Um, so I'm kind of famous, but um, <laughs> it was no, big, no big deal. Um, so, I, you know, I think that meeting people and finding out who they are and what's their story is... And what do they do that will inspire you is is at least 50% of the experience. Right. So. Well, and also you have all these sessions to choose from, right? You could be busy from morning until nighttime. Good Lord, yes. But you really don't want to fill up your schedule with session, session, no. session, session, session. No. There are people that will do that. Yes. But we don't recommend it. No, we do not. No. You really need to take some time away. Yeah. You need to be able to talk to people. Yes. You need to be able to relax and let your mind relax. Yes. Because your mind is going to be like you and I, after uh, the first night of the last couple conferences we've been to, we're like, I'm brain dead. <laughs> like, my brain is just like, <laughs> we're, you, you've, you've had so much input that you need to decompress. Right. And you need to take that time, whether that's the time where you go through your notes, whether that's the time you go to social hour and have a drink, maybe go do some karaoke Find right. somebody to go have dinner with, whatever that is, or lunch. Lunch, yeah. You know, and and remember these sessions overlap. Yes. So yeah. you're not. You, you could be busy all the time. Yes. So take time. Take yeah. time. One right. of the most fun things that I love to do, and I I feel like I've now introduced you to my addiction, is the vendor floor. So I don't. I can't do everything. I, I feel like sometimes in my job, people. I'm, Are you sure? Yeah. I will. Shh. Don't let that get out. <laughs> I feel like sometimes like, you know, people always ask me, you know, like, oh, where do I, you know, how do, what kind of carts should I buy? Or what kind of this should I get? Or what kind of that should I get? Like, I can't have all that knowledge. So my line, my famous line, and anybody who knows me knows that I say this is, I have a guy. <laughs> yes. It's not always a guy. It's just, that's, it's a metaphorical guy. But like, I have, I have contacts and that's where I've made these contacts. I have a guy that's going to give me the bus deal on carts and I know he is because we have a, we've made a connection over the last five or six years where he knows that I'm going to give him steady cart business. And he, and he knows I will, that will stop immediately if he's not going to give me the best price, mm -hmm. but he always, he takes really good care of my folks and over and above. Sometimes one time he might've even delivered something like in his own truck or, and, you know, he might've had to, ha because the things were running late and we needed to get things going. So he, he helped us out. He loaned us a bunch of stuff when a, when a cargo ship blew up in the port of China and all of our stuff was stuck and he wow. delivered temporary carts to the schools that needed them. So those are the relationships that I've made on the vendor floor. And you got to see it over the last couple of conferences. You go, I go, oh yeah, hey, oh, we know each other. Oh right. my gosh. Yeah. So I love meeting people on the vendor floor. Plus, teachers love free crap. And there's usually a lot of free crap <laughs> given out on the vendor floor. So I, that's where I pick up things like, you know, little pop pop sockets. Right. And I pick pens. up pens. And I stickers. never buy pens. Stickers for my Tons computers and my, you know, screen cleaners. And right. And you candy. may also be able to learn something oh from these vendors, right? They're, they may have something that you didn't even know you needed until you see them. That's and you're true. like, wow, that's amazing. It's true. So definitely spend some time there. And if you are in a, in a position of purchasing or research or recommendations, you're definitely going to want to spend some time on the vendor floor. And, and th that could be anything from software to hardware and anything in between. Usually at this conference, the, the big guys are there. The Microsofts and the... Everyone is. Uh, there, there's a lot of vendors. Everyone's there. You right. can see the... Yeah, they're on the app. They're on the app. <laughs> they let, they're listed on the app. They're all there. So definitely, I would spend... You're going to need, I, I'm going to say three hours, but I think that's still not enough. No. I, I would say you either need from morning to lunch or from lunch to end on to close day. on one day to maybe get through it. But that and might- That's even quick. That might not even be enough. Right. But, you know, you do what you can. You do what you can. And- It's a good way to get your walking in. A lot of walking. <laughs> wear comfortable shoes. Um, but also, if you do have business cards- um, a lot of them have, but they'll scan your badge too, but a lot of them have drawings. True. Um, That's right. One conference I came back from with a TV. Wow. A smart TV. Because I put my business card in. Winner need not be present. That was also a key because Sweet. I happened to be in a session and literally my, I was like, I just kept joking like my phone's going to ring at 430. My phone's going to ring at 430 because <laughs> I'm going to win that TV. And I won that TV. I had to, I had to check the TV in checked baggage from San Antonio, Texas. Wow. 
and it did it came through checked luggage. So, way to go, Southwest Airlines. Nice. I didn't tweet them, but I was very proud of them because that TV <laughs> came through. I was, I was like, can I carry this on? They're like, nope. nope. <laughs> You're going to have to check that. I was like, it's a 32 inch or 36 inch TV. Wow. So anyways, you could win something. Wow. That's something. what I'm saying. Very nice. Be prepared. You could win a TV. I'm excited. Uh, oh, one last thing I was yeah. going to say on the schedules. Yeah. If you happen to be going to a session that is very popular, yeah, you want to make sure you have a backup plan. Yes. But also, some of the very popular sessions, they are going to be simul- simulcast sessions as well. So they will be showing the session in a different location, usually on a large screen TV. So if you're interested, but you don't feel like you absolutely need to be in the room, you can go watch them in another room. I'm not sure exactly, but they'll tell you where, where it's going to be located. That's so, good to know. Yeah. And they'll probably have it marked somewhere on the app. Right. I would imagine. Yeah. Good, good. So again, I can't, if you're going with other people in a group, just make sure that divide and conquer divide because and there, conquer. there are a lot of sessions on a lot of topics and there really isn't a need. Plus, if you end up picking a session that isn't right for you, and your whole team is there, then your whole team is going to get up and walk out. And that, you know, that's right. And there's no reason for all of you to be there in no. the same place at the no, same no, no. time. Unless you're supporting somebody, like it's your right. it's your team that's presenting. But for the most part, there are going to be 15 sessions on whatever, whatever your topic is that your team is focusing on. So just spread out. Right. And, and not all of them are going to fit honestly. And so don't be afraid to walk out. Like you're really not going to hurt someone's feelings. In fact, when I present, I that's usually the first thing I say is if this isn't for you, you're not hurting my feelings. I'd rather have you go find a session that is for you. Right. Because for those of you that, that this is for, you'll get what you need out of it. So don't feel like you're hurting their feelings if you need to get up and walk out. What else? What else do we got? Well, I would say the next thing is Twitter. Twitter. Oh my God. I love Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> I know you do. I am such a Twitter aholic. Okay, so Okay, so what did you tell me before, Shannon, about what's the most popular the way the teachers communicate? On Twitter. Is yeah. on Twitter. Yeah, right? so Twitter is made up of uh, I think seventy percent of Twitter is made up of educators. That's amazing. Yeah. I don't know where I got that statistic. But it's it possible good. I made it up. But I don't think I did because I read it somewhere. <laughs> But I can't remember where. But, but yeah, we but, can't cite it. No, I'm not citing it. I, <laughs> Shannon says. Stuff Shannon says. But really, Twitter is the number one place where educators collaborate and meet. Now, you can use Twitter in a variety of ways. If you only use Twitter to create an account for ISTE and just follow people and just read, you don't have to tweet a thing. Right. You just need to be able to follow people and find out what they're tweeting because the best of the best at what you do in education is on Twitter and they're tweeting about it and they're sharing pictures and websites and links and lesson plans and stories and you name it. And it's out there. Right. And a lot of those really awesome people are going to be at ISD. Right. Okay. So you need to find them. You may not be able, like I, I'm going to cry in my hotel room if I don't get to meet Rabbi Michael Cohen, (laughs) because I am a huge Twitter (laughs) fan, but I feel like, I have met people on Twitter and they're my friends. When I meet them in real life, I'm like, oh my God, I've known you forever. Like, of course, like, hey, like our friendship has developed over Twitter. So I think that's how you're going to learn about what people are doing. And and if they're in the space or the topic that you're very interested in, there's a chat about it for God's sakes. Like you can actually find a Twitter chat on almost anything in education, whether it's your state or your subject area or a topic. So get on Twitter. So if you're not on Twitter right now. Get on. Get on. So you basically just create an account. Yes. And you're just going to have your name and your Twitter handle. And this should be a professional Twitter handle. Yes. For you for you as an educator. Yeah. And you want to keep it separate from your personal. It's my if, recommendation. And you want to use the hashtag. ISTE18. Right. So ISTE18 is the official hashtag, not ISTE2018. Don't, don't say it. I don't even want to say it because I don't <laughs> right. even want to get it in your head. ISTE18. No. Right. All caps. Capital I-S-T-E-1-8. That's the official hashtag. Please don't use anything else. Please use ISTE18 because that is what people who can't go to ISTE, and there is a hashtag, hashtag not at ISTE18, <laughs> um, that people will also use. And and so those people, and I've done this because there's years I can't go to ISTE where I'm following the ISTE hashtag in my tweet deck or on my Hootsuite. Right. So I'm getting to see everything. And then I'm like, oh, that looks great. Oh, it's a live Twitter. Click, 
you know, watch a live feed or whatever. So definitely use that to share and connect with others. And you may find, you know, you may find a lifelong friendship. Friendships and professional friendships uh, are made at these conferences. Right. And Twitter is a little hard to get started, brand new to you. Yes. It's just a little different. But once you start learning the ropes, but like Shannon said, if you just log in, create an account and just observe. Yeah. And follow ISTE 18. Follow that hashtag. And if you, they are at ISTE. Yes. Right. Their account is at ISTE. Follow them. But if you, you want to follow them and follow at My Tech Tool Belt. And follow Tabaldo on Tech. <laughs> <laughs> and then after you do those three things, then you want to, you want to search hashtag ISTE 18. And from there, it'll pull up. Everything. If you go to latest, sort by latest, it'll just be a continuous feed of what people are posting. And they're, and they're posting, there's a hundred over 100 tweets right now a day. Some of them are us. But right. like, there's a, over 100 tweets a day on just people getting ready for ISTE. Definitely, definitely do that. And if you if you really, really need help with, it, with Twitter, reach out to me personally. I teach how to use PLNs and I actually have materials on how to set up your Twitter <laughs> and how to use the hashtags and things like that. So I'd be happy to share those materials with you if you want to email me. And we're going to be Instagramming some stuff yes. out. And... It, well, yeah, follow us on Instagram too. But but right. I, th- I still think that Twitter is going to be the most powerful yep, absolutely. Uh, piece. Okay. We're down to the end. Yes, getting close. Yeah. Okay, what to bring. Very important. I, I already said you can do without a computer, I believe. I may I may try it this year to leave my computer at home Whoa. and just do tablet and phone. Just because it's a long flight, I'm not going to commit 100%, okay. but not I yet. but I feel like I feel like I'm going to try. I'm going to just weigh all my options. I think you can do it. I I really do believe that you can do it with just a tablet and a phone. I'm not going I don't think I'm really going to be doing a lot of like heavy photoshop or anything. Right. So, you might not be able to cuz you're going to be podcasting. Right. So, I don't recommend that for you. <laughs> Thanks. Extra power. That external, I have, I was telling you, Amazon has, a, a, there's a brand called Anchor, A-N-K-E-R. R. We'll be on our show notes. It's, it's on our show notes. And um, our website. And they have a, a portable, it's $20, it's a portable four port USB, plugs into the wall, but it's also a charger. So it can be plugged in and it's recharging itself. And then it also has four USB quick charge ports. Um, so it will charge to 80% in 35 minutes. It's a very, very rapid charge. And that, I actually have two of those, a four port one and a two port one that I will carry with me at, during throughout the conference so that my phone doesn't die and my tablet doesn't die. Those will not power my laptop. So if my laptop right. dies, I'm lugging around. At, I don't even know how many pounds this is, but I'd be lugging that around in my backpack the whole time. So I feel like I could just get around with a lot lighter of a bag so with those two power bricks, I'll never run out of power. I can recharge them at night. And uh, uh, cables, make right. sure you've got cables for everything you need, the micros and the ones. Because, yeah, you'll be having your phone, and which is going to be taking much just more power because you'll be have, using this, the, the uh, app, app yeah. and Twitter and taking pictures. So, yes, you'll definitely need more, more you're, power. You're going to need more power. Definitely more power. Uh, my bag actually has a USB port in it. So I... I can just plug a power brick into my bag. And then, so I've got multiple power charging options. So that's pretty cool. Aren't you fancy? I know. Well, you know, I got to have it. (laughs) And then one of the little tips, turn your brightness down on any screen you have. So that will save power as well. So the brighter the screen, obviously the more power it's going to suck. So you can do that. Um, You need pens and pencils. Yes. Business cards, if you have them. Mm Mm-hmm. Hopefully your cell phone has a camera. If it doesn't have a camera, I think you are stuck in the 90s. <laughs> right. Snacks, granola bars, whatever you need M&Ms. that's portable. Yeah, you, you're, I need Skittles. That's huge for me. Brenda knows that. I have a, a slight addiction. <laughs> but whatever your midday thing is, you and I kind of have a thing in the, in the conference world is we kind of have, we have breakfast and then... Snack, 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 and then dinner. Right. Uh, we tend to s- kind of skip lunch and have, like, I bring uh, the Trader Joe's, you know, nuts and granola bars and fruit and, you know, anything that's portable, apples, bananas, right. things like that, and try to not do just lunch. Sit down. It's expensive. Right. That, it's not because we're, we're dieting and we right. want to, you no. know, our bodies need You'll to look, look. You can look at me and you, you can tell. You can be like, we are not on a diet. <laughs> However, it's just too darn expensive. Right. And, and the time to sit down. Right. I mean, it's nice to sit down. Absolutely. But I don't need to sit down for an hour and a half. Right. 
And then what we bring for hydration, mm-hmm. hi- okay, first of all, staying hydrated is critical because you're, if you are in a different time zone or you're traveling, it's going to be warm and humid and humid in Chicago. Which, so I, I don't do well with humidity. Yeah. So we recommend reusable water bottles, right? We couldn't have got through, I, I don't think we could have got through the last conference we went to without our reusable water bottle. So I have mine, carabiner, handles, blah, 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 clip it on my bag, throw it in my backpack. But um, I use my Hydro Flask. I'm not, um, I don't get any promotional materials right. from Hydro Flask. But, uh, Mine's smaller than hers. But. <clears throat> I have the giant 32, <laughs> fits a Trenta <laughs> from Starbucks in there. Stay hydrated. Please, yes. please, please. I would hope that this convention center will have water dispensers. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, otherwise you got to buy a bottle of water. But, right. but it's just handy to have. Stay reusable, save yep. the earth, save yep. a bottle. All right. Okay. Next, how to dress. I'm cold. Huh? I'm, it's 75 degrees in here and I'm wearing a jacket. So <laughs> and I'm, and just, I'm not cold. I'm I do cold. not run cold. <laughs> I'm cold. I run warm. All the time. So I recommend... But the air conditioning also follows you. It does. Always. No no matter where I sit, it's going to be blowing right on me. Um, Layers. Yes. I have a couple of lightweight sweatshirts. I always wear a t-shirt to start, and especially in the summer. But then I have a lightweight sweatshirt and then a little bit heavier one that, again, that's why I don't like to carry my laptop with me because I can keep my sweatshirts in my backpack. Right. Something very easy, compactable. Yes. Yes. uh, That will shrink down and be able to put in your backpack or messenger bag. Very yes. important. Uh, definitely, because it they crank the air conditioner up in those convention rooms and those meeting hall spaces so cold that even if it's at 90 or 100 degrees outside, it could be 65 inside. Right. And they're anticipating a lot of people, so they definitely keep the air cranked. So layers, definitely. Mm-hmm. Backpack, messenger bag, whatever it is. There is no guarantee that ISTE will be providing bags this year. They have in the past. But we went to the Q conference this year and they were totally green. So there was no bag of swag, no bag, period. There was no Nothing book. There was no paper. Any paraphernalia or anything you get. So we were they were really pushing a green conference at the Q conference and my my suspicion is ISTE will be moving in that direction as well. So right. But anything you get, any stickers or yeah. pens or, you know, you have to definitely think of a place where, to, where you're going to put them. Yeah. You, and a purse is not a thing. Like that's not the thing you want. So you're definitely going to want a backpack or a messenger bag or something like that. And right. then um, comfortable shoes. <laughs> you learned that the hard way. Hard way. <laughs> I have done it now twice where I've just only packed one pair of shoes. Ooh, that's rough. Wear comfortable shoes, pack multiple shoes. Right. Um, yeah, you need to give your feet a break. You need to give your feet a break from one pair of shoes. And also, my uh, Dr. Scholl's gel inserts are coming today. I'm very excited. <laughs> I will have them picked out and ready to go by the time we get there. So you are going to do a lot of walk-in. Your Fitbit or your Apple Health Watch is going to get uh, some serious steps in on this. So just be prepared. Wear comfortable shoes. I recommend flip-flops if you've got flip-flops or the, what, mm-hmm. uh, I don't know if there's another word for flip flops. That's what we call them. Oh, yeah. um, go ahead. Go <laughs> ahead. Um, so in the evening time, your feet are going to be ready for a break. Oh, they're called slippers too in in Hawaii. In Hawaii, they are slippers <laughs> with an a h at the end. Slippers. I think. Um, so yeah. So just just know that you're going to want to give your feet a break kind of yes. at the end of the day. So I tend to keep my flip flops again in my backpack, mm-hmm. um, wrapped up in a in a old grocery recycle bag and. At the end of the day, I swap, swap, them, I swap out. them out. That's <laughs> smart. Keep an eye on the weather. There, I don't know if there's showers. I again, I'm not from Chicago. I've never, I have a layover in Chicago once, but I'm never. This will be my first time, so I know it's going to be humid. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that could mean rain. It could mean rain. Absolutely. So I don't know if people use umbrellas in Chicago, but like I will bring a hooded thing, a little a hooded jacket. Yeah, um, a rain jacket. Yeah, maybe you're just a lightweight something or other because mm-hmm. it's not going to be cold. I think it'll just no. be it's just going to be wet. I don't like to be wet. Okay, I don't you, like you to be need cold. A rain jacket. I don't like to be wet. Well, I got maybe a poncho. Right. Oh yeah, ponchos works. Yeah, ninety nine cent store. Yep. And um, throw it away. Emergency poncho. Yep. So those are p- portable. So those are those are kind of the my recommendations on. Sunglasses, hat, maybe. For sure. Yeah. If you're going to be walking at all walking. outside. And there's so much to do in Chicago. Is there? Oh, I've never gosh. been there. Oh, 
you're going to show me around. Ugh. And Dan, my my colleague from work, is from Chicago. Dan the man. Dan the, the man. man. <laughs> um, so we are so excited because he, it, this is his home, his, right? His, his town. His town. This is Dan's town. So he's very <laughs> excited to to kind of give us a little tour. I'm, I'm very excited that uh, we get to... I get to go with him on to this conference because he's just, he's very excited. He's young. He's like, he's very excited <laughs> about it. everything. He's so excited about it. There's, there's a lot to see in Chicago. A lot of great places, Instagram worthy places. What about could, food? Food is amazing. Okay. Wow. Well. We have the deep dish pizza. Mm, you you got to try it. I got to try it. You got to try it. It's my year of yes. The, the hot dogs. I've heard the Chicago hot dogs are pretty good. Different. Always. You know, you just got to try their food. That's what I love going to different places because right. I... I want to say, what's the local thing? I want to ha- eat whatever well, it is. Dan's going to tell us because I don't want to like, I don't want to get to like what happened to me in Atlanta when I was at a conference in Atlanta. And I was like, where can I go eat? And they're like Chick Fil A, and I was like, No, I can go to Chick Fil A in yeah, Torrance. I, yeah, like, that's I don't not. Need to go to Chick Fil A in Atlanta. <laughs> no. So, anyways, no. I didn't. End up, I offended them because I Good. didn't want to go to Chick Fil A, but I, I mean, I get it, but no. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. I didn't travel all the way across the country to eat at Chick Fil A. Exactly. Chick Fil A is great. Yes, absolutely. Chick Fil A is good food. We but are big fans. Big fans of Chick Fil A. <laughs> no, but I didn't go to all the way to Atlanta, right. Georgia. Go three thousand miles to eat at a Chick Fil A. <laughs> I really wanted some like local. Right. Right. So I'm excited. Check our Instagram feed. Yes, soon. we're going to be having uh, food um, and yes, everything, and then also we're going to be highlighting different things on the app and how to ma- navigate the app and we're going to be having all kinds of exciting things to highlight definitely check us out on instagram if you're not following us on instagram you should do it now yes at my tech tool belt because then you won't miss right when we do these because the, you're gonna because we spent a lot of time being silly with the app because we were like <laughs> what i you found something and i couldn't find it so we definitely want people to know where stuff is right all right and then relax yes Downtime. You need to schedule in some downtime. You do. For you. Put it in. I always have felt that like my company's paying for this or my school is paying for this. And so I need to like make the most, make the most of it. Yes. But you still only work when, if you were at work that day, you are only going to work, you know, at eight or 10 hour day, depending. (laughs) So, so know that you can have fun. Right. Give yourself permission to relax, have fun, debrief, because if you are too overwhelmed and too, and trying to take in too many things, then you're not going to be able to bring it back and bring back things that are really effective and meaningful for your team or your peers or your school. So take time, relax, reflect. If there's a pool, sit by the pool. Right. You know, if, if, if you like to have a little drink, have a drink. Like right. there, that is the time and the space to do that and mm-hmm. make friends. Right. Go to the networking opportunities. Follow us. Follow us. We'll tell you where we're going, where yeah. we're headed. Yeah. You know, well, come it, join until us. we go to Dan's house and his mom <laughs> isn't going to let everybody come over for dinner. But we will be out and about with our friends that we know, different meet and greets and things like that. As much of the stuff that we can get out to as we can, especially you. Yes. You'll you'll be out kind of gallivanting and socializing. And come meet us. <sighs> like we would love to get together and yes. talk to you and t- tell us what you think of our podcast. Honestly. Honestly, right? <laughs> what, t- what do you want to know? What do you, can t- what can we give you that you want to yes. hear more of? Yes, because we're tired of talking. <laughs> <laughs> not, not, no, yet. not yet. <laughs> we like hearing, I like hearing more about what other people are doing. And so that, to me, meeting those people, meeting you, whoever you are out there, I haven't even met you yet, but right. I want to meet but you. We're excited to meet you. Because you might be the next guest on our podcast. That's right. So if you think you've got something cool to share with us and you need to find us, tweet us. We'll tell you where we are. And we're going to have some swag with us. Lots of swag. Yes. So follow us on Twitter, which we are at My, My Tech, Tech Tool Belt. Belt, and our Facebook page, and join our group. Yeah, we have both a page and a group, right. so you got to do both. I don't know why. I can't. I haven't figured that part out yet. If you know how to manage these groups, can, you, can somebody tell me? Because we have a page and a group, but you right. got to join the group, but you can like the page. Right. So, exactly. Yeah. And My, again, My, My Tech, Tech Tool Belt. Belt. Yep. Not that hard to find. And Instagram, Instagram, my tech tool, which I love Instagram. I know. Follow us, follow us, have fun, tweet us. And hopefully we'll see you in Chicago. We'll see you in Chicago. So our next episode is not going to be about ISTE, but the following episode will be the ISTE recap. Recap. Yeah. Right. So we're doing this pre-ISTE. Pre-ISTE. And that we'll way. A, yep. Then two weeks, we'll have another episode. It's a surprise. We can't tell you what it is. Right. But it's going to be great. 
Oh, can't yes. wait till that one's released. That one will be while we're at ISTE, I believe. Doesn't that one? Yes. That but one? we will be um, having little sessions on probably Instagram yes. while we're at ISTE. Yes. So if you find me and you don't mind being on Instagram, I'd love to interview you. Just a really quick, what's going on with you? Yeah. Where are you at? Best session you've been to so Best far? Best session. Tell me something exciting. What'd you learn today? Right. Yeah. That I think that would be awesome. And, and those will... Probably be both on Twitter and Instagram. Right. right. Yeah. So we're, yeah. Find us. Yes. We want to meet you. Yep. That's the most important thing. I need more friends. And with the ISTE app, you should be able to find me. Yeah. Brenda can send you her location. That's right. And you can find me. She's got cool shirts. They're bright purple. <laughs> and I will have uh, some lanyards. We have lanyards. We have we have Flipgrid sent us some swag. We have Go Noodle. We have Go Noodle sent us swag. And we'll have some my tech tool belt swag. Lots of my tech tool yes. belt swag. So we've got we've got lots of stuff. Mm-hmm. Lots of stuff to give away. So come find me. Come find us. We'll see you hopefully at ISTE. And if we don't, hashtag not at ISTE, that's fine. You can follow us. <laughs> you can follow us anyway. Anyways, we're excited. There's some people we want to thank that helped with this episode. When we were just starting our podcast and we were getting ready to go to, to conferences, we listened to two podcasts that really got us inspired, not only to do an episode like this, but to, we actually were actually prepared to go to the conferences. And, and right. so we listened to Tosa's Talking Tech, two of our favorite hosts there. And so if you don't listen to their podcast, you need to subscribe to them right away and check it out podcast Podcast. that was put on by Q. Right. And so those were the two podcasts that we listened to. They had multiple episodes, really took to them, listened to them multiple times. Uh, The other person we want to thank for giving us guidance on this uh, podcast is Steve Wick. He wrote a blog post for ISTE uh, called 10 Must Read Tips for ISTE 2018. And he went to his first ISTE conference last year, 2017. And so he put together these 10 tips. We did not duplicate much of his stuff. I don't, in fact, I think we tried not to duplicate any of it uh, so that you would go and read his blog on the ISTE website. We will put a link to his blog in our show notes and on our website. But we just wanted to thank those folks because they inspired us and we thank them and right. and they've contributed to this episode. Thank you so much for joining us today at the My Tech Tool Belt podcast in our episode of preparing for the ISTE conference. We went over many, many things today, including how not to feel overwhelmed. We talked about the ISTE app and setting it all up. We talked about all the different sessions you can attend checking out the vendor floor, the schedule, using Twitter while you're at the conference, including using the hashtag ISTE18, what to bring with you that will help you have a better conference, how to dress, what to do in your downtime, how important networking is, and of course, don't forget to enjoy yourself. Now, if this episode has helped you prepare for the ISTE18 conference, please pass it on to a friend that also may enjoy it. Thanks so much for getting the word out about the My Tech Tool Belt podcast. Mm-hmm.